In this video, we're going to continue working on the dials that we created in that last tutorial. In fact, we're going to build off of that. We're going to be using the same action setup that we just used to create the dials. But you can see here, I've got everything hidden, the blue and the white aluminum pieces that we created in the last one. So let's go to the end result now. And let's again, turn on our grids to use that as a guide for creating the base elements that we need. So let's look at the end result. And as I said, those are the dials that are highlighted that we just did. Now we want to draw these dashes, or these lines that we'll see that are along the edge of the aluminum, the reflective aluminum piece we created earlier. So let's go back to our action setup where we have our geometry hidden and we'll move over to give ourselves a little more room in our schematic. And I'll drag a 3D shape into the schematic. Let me disconnect it from that axis. I didn't mean to have that selected. Let's delete the bottom axis in the G mask. Select our 3D shape, come down to our node bin, hit the G key, and drag a G mask rectangle into the schematic. Then hit F4, go back to our result view, hold the Alt and Shift key and click and drag to create a square. Draw it small like this, this is good. Now let's zoom in on this. Region select all our vertices with the select tool by holding control and dragging. And then enable the edit box option. Then again, holding Alt and Shift, select any one of the corner vertices and just make your adjustment until it is exactly lined up to our grid. Let me disable the edit box option now. We got a perfectly sized square that we want. Go back to the schematic view and make sure you have the axis, the top axis for our shape selected. And then let's return back to our end result view. You can turn off the grids now by choosing the quick off option from the fly out, the grid option. I will zoom in a little bit. Make sure proportional for scale is off. And we're going to create a really thin shape for our little dashes, our little indicators. So let's set our scale X parameter to 3. And then we'll scale the Y to 30. And then we'll take the Y position and drag it to the top. Let's put it at like 500. Go back to our schematic and let's get a replica node. We're going to create many of these. Then connect it to the top axes of the shape we just created. And then on the number setting for this replica, enter the number 72. And then put the rotation value for the Z to 5. Now we've got 72 tall dials. And now we want to make smaller dials that will be within each one of these, in between them. Let's go back to our schematic view. Make sure you select all your nodes that we just created, including the replica, and then hit Control D to duplicate this. With the newly duplicated replica node selected, hit F4 and let's turn off our icons by hitting the I key until they are turned off, icon off. Then enter 90 with this new replica selected for the number field, and then one for the rotation Z field. Now we have 90 copies of this dial. Now we need 360 of these to be honest, but we can't do that because the maximum number the replica allows you to enter is 100. So that's why we're going to do 90 and then duplicate this a couple times. So to have 360 of these, we need to set it to 90 and then make four quadrants. Let's go back into our schematic view and let's add another axis and attach it to the top of the replica. And then I'm going to duplicate that axis and then attach that also to the replica node. With that one selected, let's go back to our end result and down in our rotation for the Z, put the value to 90. Now we've got the two quadrants populated with the, the dials that we want. And then duplicate that axis that we just put to 90 for the Z position and connect it to the replica also. Then with that axis selected, let's enter a value of 180. Duplicate that axis and then attach that to the replica. So now we have a fourth axis attached to this. And then with that axis selected, now enter the Z value for rotation to 270. Now all four quadrants are populated with 90 dials. And these are supposed to be our shorter dials. So I want to select the axis above our 3D shape and go back to the parameters and looking in the viewport, I want to scale down the Y value, which will in turn then make them smaller than the original ones we made. Set the Y value to 15. 
So this is good. The size is what I want, but I want to reposition these now. I want these smaller dials to be at the edge of the larger, the outline of the circle. So let's go back to our schematic view once again, and we're going to select the axis that is above our G mask now. And then we can adjust our Y position for this axis while looking at the end result to line them up properly. I'll enter a value of 125 to be exact. So now we've completed creating the smaller dials, at least the shape. We wanna now incorporate them into the larger 3D dials that we created earlier. So I'm gonna go back to the schematic and I'm gonna add another axis into the scene and I'll hold the shift key and I'll click and kiss this new axis to the replica and the four axes that we created to create the four different quadrants of the smaller dials. Then go back to our main axis, click off of that and drag and connect it to this new axis. Let's now unhide the other geometry. So make sure your selection mode is set to branch and select this main axis right here. And then just hit the H key to unhide everything. Hit the F4 key to go back to our result to see the end result. We now see everything is unhidden. Now let's rotate our smaller dials that we just created. Go back to the action schematic and select the top axis for those small, smaller dials that we created. And then for the X rotation value, enter minus 90. Let's add another light to the scene to see this a little more clearly. So go back to our schematic, hit the L key, drag a light into the scene. Now we can see them clearly. Let's go back to our schematic and select that top axis for the smaller dials once again. Go back to our end result and make sure you have proportional on now. And then let's scale these up. Increase the scale amount until they reach the border of our larger dials. Then we'll adjust our Y position to raise them up to the top of these other dials. And then I can scale it a little bit more now that I've got them lined up to the top. I've got my Y position at around 202 and the scale parameters are about 197. But now we want to rotate these so they're facing down. The long dials and the short dials. And to do that, I need to do it to the axis that is above the 3D shape for both of these. So let's use an expression to connect this rotation that we're about to do. Select the tall dials axis, the first one. Go to the animation curve editor. Hit the shift and the tab key. That will bring up the selected nodes parameters. Then select the rotation X parameter, highlight that and then come over here and click copy. Then go back up to the schematic and select the axis that is above our shorter dials, the last one we created. Again, go down to the animation curve editor and once again, hold the shift and the tab key to display this axis parameters. Select its X rotation parameter and then come over to the right hand side and click the link button. Now an expression has been created connecting these two parameters. Now, when we change the X rotation for our taller dials with the main axis, it will affect the smaller dials axis. Let's discard our animation editor. Go back to our object controls with the first axis selected. Go back to the end result, F4. Now, if we start to adjust the X rotation value, you'll see all of our dials are going to follow along. I'll rotate this to 65. Then we can go back out to the schematic and select the main axis that's controlling all of these again. And then we can adjust our scale value now that we've rotated them. We want them to maintain the width of our bigger dials. And again, we can adjust our Y position to bring them down. Oh, well, it looks like I need to scale them a little bit more. Now, if we want to, we can change the thickness of these dials by going back to the original G mass shape that we created and making adjustments to that. Going back to our schematic, we want to select the axis that is above our 3D shape for the first set of dials we created. Go back to our end result view. We turn off proportional here. So for example, if we enter a value of two for the X scale, you'll see they got a little shorter. We can go and change the scale Y value also and I'll set the Z scale to 100. And we can just make some more adjustments to this. Let's put the Y scale to 30, and I'll put the 
X scale to one. So now you'll see they are really thinner than the other dials that we have. Again, you can start making adjustments to this as you want by adjusting any of these scale parameters. If you want to thicken it up or you want to make it thinner, longer, shorter, and so on. But the end parameters that I used, the Z was at 100, the Y was at 20, and the X was at 3. Now we want to create one more row of these dials. If I go back to the end result, you can see these small ones right here. I want to create those next. So back in our action schematic, we'll make a duplicate or a copy of our taller ones and repurpose those. So in the schematic view, select everything from this replica right here down, which are the taller dials, and hit Control D to duplicate that. And I'll move that off to the side. And then we want to connect our main axis for all the dials to this new duplicate set of dials. Now go back into the schematic and select the axis that is above our 3D shape and below the replica that we just created in this duplicate. And then go back to the end result with F4. I'll set the X rotation value to 90 degrees. And then I'm going to start using my Y position slider to move them in. Wait, I made a mistake. The X rotation should actually be at zero, not 90 degrees. So let's change that. And then we can use our Y position value to drag them in, position them inside the center here. And then I can use my Z position to bring them down and get them into the center. Then I'll set the Y scale value to 10. This will make them a little shorter than the other ones. And go back into our schematic and select the replica tool. We can make some adjustments to this if we want to. You could decrease the number if you didn't want to have as many of these. But I'll leave it as it is for right now. And let me go back to my schematic and select the parent axis for everything. And then we can rotate in the view to see everything that we've created. Now let's say we want to make the dials, the bigger dials, the ones with the white accents, the blue ones, smaller. Well, we can do that. Let's go back to our action schematic. To do that, let's add another axis. So I'll drag that into my scene. And then I'll cut the connection between the replica node temporarily for all three pieces of that geometry. And then I'll connect this new axis to all three of the axes that are controlling the geometry that makes up our larger dials. Remember, just hold shift and kiss them. And then I'll click and drag off the replica node and connect that to this new axis. Now with our new axis selected, let's go back to our end result. I can hit the I key twice so we're looking at just the selected icons, which is the axis that we have selected. And then I'm going to change the center for this new axis. I'm going to enter 1000. It moves over to the corner of this dial. And then enable the proportional option for the scale on this axis. And as we decrease the scale parameter, we can scale down all of the blue dials with the white accents at one time. Then we can turn off proportional. And then I can individually scale these geometries in X and or Y. And then once we've scaled them down to where we like it, we can start to use the X and the Y position sliders to locate them and put them exactly where we want them to be. So that's how these dials for the watch were created. That's going to end this video.